and welcome to the Game Show Canada Season 3 here on YouTube. And this is going to be a big season because a lot of wonderful changes are happening. First of all, you notice a brand new intro. Second of all, a new camera. Thanks to my good friend Melissa Lawrence. Thank you for the awesome Christmas gift, Melissa. If this season turns out to be a success, you're going to be a huge part of that. Now, I ended 2019 and didn't get to mention that there are a lot of shows that I would like to cover on this show, but uh, I'm having trouble finding footage. So if you happen to have any of these shows that I'm listing right here, then please get in touch with me and we'll talk trade or if you would just like to donate it, that would be even better and you'll get a special thanks credit. So with all that in mind, let's get on with season three of the Game So Canada and talk about this first show. It comes from 2006, aired on the Comedy Network. Was it a comedy show? Yes. Was it a low-budget show? Yes, it was. Am I going to keep track of how many times I say ass? You bet your ass. To you bet your ass. Please welcome your host, Stuart Francis. Hello, I'm Stuart Francis. Welcome to you bet your ass, the show that's paying for my wife's rehab. Now, you bet your ass was a comedy game show. They aired for two seasons on the Comedy Network, Canada's offshoot of Comedy Central. The host is stand-up comedian Stuart Francis. Stewart's stand-up style, it's an acquired taste. He uses a lot of one-liners and bad puns, and it's a taste that, personally, I've never really acquired. His first hosting style, he seems to be playing the gimmick of a phony host. His jokes can get tiresome, and it's not uncommon to see him bumble a question or two in an episode. And when he uncharacteristically shows enthusiasm, he overdoes it. But it's hard to tell if that's him phoning it in, or if he's playing a character that's phoning it in. And I just have to say right now, his attempt at the catchphrase, well done you, just doesn't have the same punch as the similar sounding, right you are, coined by a much better host in the late legendary Jeff Edwards. Along with Stewart is co-host, actress Tara Hewitt. So Tara, beyond being eye candy, is really not needed here. Stuart could easily be doing just about everything she does. And it doesn't help that she is kind of a phony too. But again, it's hard to tell if that's acting like you're phoning it in, or if she's genuinely being phony. Ultimately, the host tandem, it leaves some to be desired. But sometimes a game can survive with a mediocre host. So let's see if it can be done here. Round one is called Piece of Ass. How about some rules, Stuart? Okay, in the Piece of Ass round, each question is worth 100 points. Unless you feel really confident about the category, and then you can double down for 200 points, but you will have to get both questions right. If you get it wrong, well, someone else will be able to buzz in and steal it from you, and that's not good. But keep your eyes out for the wild card. It's your chance to win $500 and steal it from one of your competitors. You each get 1,000 points to start. Stuart, take it off. Stuart. Stuart. Thanks, Stuart. I mean, Satara. That's essentially the whole gimmick. Contestants start with a thousand points, get a category, and choose either a single question for 100 points, or they can double down and try to answer two questions for 200 points, with all the questions revolving around pop culture. It's an alright gimmick. It kind of works, but it gets boring after a while. One question in the round is the wild card. When the wild card comes up, this happens. New category, hit me! <laughs> what, wild card? What, what's, what's, what, what's a wild card? I know, I know, I know, over here. The wild card is Mark's chance to steal 500 points from one of his competitors, and he's going to choose who. So who's it going to be, Mark? What the fuck, Stuart? Satara just explained it. Can you pay attention? Play continues until the time's up sound of a brain donkey is heard. Well done, Crystal. That's the 
Good. I wonder does Gorman's make an ear soap? Round two is called the Dirty Dozen. How about some rules, Stuart? In this round, contestants will be randomly asked four different questions. When the light shines on you, that's how you know it's your turn to answer and you have to be fast. You get 500 points for correct answers and you don't lose points for wrong answers. Good luck, Stuart. Thanks again, Stuart. I mean, Satara. Twelve questions are asked in a random order, four for each contestant. The first season, the questions were for 100 points apiece. Any contestant would be called on before Stuart would ask the question. Once he finished reading, they would have three seconds to answer. This was tweaked in season two, with the questions being worth 500 points each, and the question was asked before a contestant was chosen. Once they were chosen, they had three seconds to answer. I prefer the season two format. It moved a little faster, and it forced all three contestants to remain alert for the entire round. The only problem is they never really figured out how to balance the points out. 100 points apiece was too low in Season 1, and the whole round really didn't matter in the end. One round. On Season 2, 500 points apiece was too much, and it rendered the first round virtually meaningless. They couldn't have met in the middle and make the questions worth, say, 2, 250, or even 300 points apiece. Round 3 is called Up Your Ass. Stuart, would you like to... Never mind. Now, this round is very similar to the piece of ass round, but we've upped the stakes and upped the ante. So each question is now worth 200 points, and you can double down for 400 points. I'm going to bump you each a thousand more points to carry on. Stuart, take it away. Thanks again, Sahara. It's played the same as the first round, except there's no wild card, and the point values are doubled. Plus, each contestant spotted another thousand points to start the round. And there's not really much more to say. Round four, the final round, is called Ass on the Line. It, it's okay, Sahara. I got this. Four categories are shown, each containing three questions. Player in third goes first, chooses one of four categories, and bets any or all of their points on up to three questions. Correct answer adding the points, a wrong answer deducting them. If a player drops to zero at any point, they're done. In Season 1, the minimum bet was 100 points, but this was increased to 500 in Season 2 after a number of anticlimactic games. The player with the most points is the winner and picks up $500. In Season 1, they faced the decision, however. They could take the $500 and quit or risk it on a double or nothing question and potentially win $1,000. These are very low payoffs from the mid-2000s. And even worse in that first season, there was no true tiebreaker. When the tie did happen, the two players that were tied were each automatically given $500, and the double or nothing question wasn't even offered. Really? You can't even do a toss-up jumping question to break the tie? It's like they didn't, couldn't even be asked to try and come up with a tiebreaker. And I always hate the, the idea of winners of potential for the winner to go home with nothing. Because when they gamble and lose, there's no winner on the show that day. And that's just awkward. The true winner in that situation is the producer, who just got a show and didn't have to give away any money that day. Luckily, they listened, and in Season 2, the payoff system was tweaked. Now the contestant won $500, which would be theirs to keep, win or lose. And then they were given the choice to either take one question and try to win an additional $1,000, or two questions and try to win $2,000, bumping the potential win to a much more reasonable $2,500. Ultimately, it's an okay show but nothing about it screams like it's going to last long term. And there are so many factors working against it. Somehow pop culture quizzers don't seem to last very long. That was a good example of that. Good show. But it didn't find the right audience that Lifetime was looking for. And also working against it is the fact that Comedy Central has struggled to find a hit game show after the cancellation of Winman Stein's Money. 
To the best of my knowledge, nothing since that day has lasted beyond two seasons. So there you have it. You bet your ass. It lasted for two seasons and proved that the Windman Stein's money curse has hit Comedy Central not only in the United States, but also in Canada. So the next time out will, will be February, and whether we like it or not, Valentine's Day is around the corner. So I'll be looking at a romantic show. In this case, I'm going to stretch when I say romantic show because it was more of a trivia show about aspects of love. Love me, love me not. Hope to see you then. Until then, Mark Power, long may your big chip drop. Become a Patreon backer at www.patreon.com slash gameshowgumbo or check out our website www.gameshowgumbo.com This has been an impressive production.